I just watched a lesson. I mean, seriously, a lesson in self anger management. And I have to say, I am absolutely impressed. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine. This is season nine, episode eight. <sighs> Listen, whole lot going on, a whole, whole lot going on. Um, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff in this review. I, there's an apology that I must send out. And also, like I said, I just seen a lesson, a, a pure D lesson in self anger management that actually impressed me. Um, but let's just, let's go from the beginning. We're back in Atlanta. They're back in Atlanta, Georgia. First stop is Quad's house. Chuck. Listen, obviously the powers that be over there at Bravo feel the same way about Lil Mason over at Quad's house as I do. Because we generally start in the episode, somewhere in that first 10 minutes, we get to see that little old man that Quad is over there raising. That Mason is too daggone funny. Child Quad's over there trying to teach him how to tie his shoestrings. Listen, I did it twice. Twice in my house and a few other times throughout daycare, but twice in my house where it was just me and them. And I didn't have another parent that was actually helping. And I was helping. You, know, you all know that I used to have daycare. I used to do daycare. So a lot of things. I've helped potty train folks and all of that. And I've helped people learn to tie shoes. But when it's your own, it's just you and them. <laughs> it's you and them. So two times I had to go through this, this shoe time thing. Baby, that quad was telling him, okay, now focus. I said, oh, that is like deja vu. That brings back so much memories. They don't be wanting to hear, especially boys. Girls want to know what's going on. Girls want to know how to get their self together. But little boys don't give a damn about no tie, no shoe, no tucking in, no shirts. They could care less. They could care less. And Mason was looking at quad like, just get to it, lady. And she said, don't put your head in your hands. You're not no drunk. Old. He said, I ain't drunk. I said, that little boy is too funny. I swear that little boy been here before. I swear he's been here before. He is funny. Like I said, it seems every episode, pretty much, we see Mason somewhere in that first 10 minutes. Somebody over there at Bravo thinks that Mason's funny too. He is just hilarious. Then we swing on by to uh, Contessa and the trainer, baby. I, t I knew he was going to get you, honey. I knew he was going to get you with his fine self. Honey, what you, girl, what you eat in Vegas? Whatever it was, you ate it all up. <laughs> That's my version of it. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> you did. Contessa, <laughs> Contessa was putting everything she could find in her mouth over there in Vegas. She knew. She said, oh, what, what did I get? I said, we got work to do. I cracked up. I said, you, you know what you did. Girl, you ate everything. She said, woo, scallops. Woo, yeah, give me a drink. Everything went past the table. Contessa put it in her mouth, honey, just like she was supposed to. What happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas, but the pounds don't stay in Vegas, honey. Trust me. Anyway, that was pretty funny, too. So that was the real lighthearted part of what we had going on. Now let's move on. I'm going to go right on over there to Anila and Karen's house. Anila, I don't know what you think you're doing here, but let me explain what you're doing. Okay, because I don't think you get it. I don't think you all there, sis. Like, I, I really think it's like, you know, there's like 52 cards in a deck. 
And I think that Anila has like 47 cards in her deck. Some of the pages of her book are glued together. You know, she, she's eating chewing gum with the wrapper on it. I, I just, say, girl, do you really realize what you are putting out in these streets? I'm going to help you. Listen to Spiller Boy, okay? Girl, all you are doing at this point is telling us that your mama's nasty. Oh, I said it. I said it! You all are sitting there. You're sitting there making a list of things that are going to have to take place. And Karen's just putting his foot down because the man is trying to keep his head about him. And trying not to be completely miserable inside his own home. But the only concerns that we're actually hearing is about how nasty your mother and father are more, more so your mother than your father. Wash your hands. Don't touch the food before or at, before you wash your hands and wash your hands after you touch the food. This is basic human stuff. And to keep drilling it and driving it in our face, all we coming away with, girl, well, every time I get up and I walk away, I'll be like, child, Anila's mama nasty, child. That's, that's what I'm walking away with. Do you realize that that is the message that's come, talking about the bad at it? Your mom's getting the dirty at it. She's getting the dirty at it. She dropping food on floors and leaving them. She, she touching food and out not wishing her hat. Those are your words, my man. See, I didn't film nothing over there at your house. You filmed that over at your house. This is the message you sent in that. And quite honestly, I'm not trying to be rude. Girl, if I came to your house, girl, I wouldn't drink a glass of water, Miss Thing. Not a glass of water. I wouldn't. Because of the message that you are putting out. Mm-mm. 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 And then beyond that, beyond that, you all were talking about the whole situation. You just sat down with Karen. I said, Karen, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it because you'll be back in the problems with Eugene. Now, Eugene had already showed you that he'll punch you, honey, to just chill. But you go right in and tell him about the whole little situation about uh, that doggone goofy Toya talk about penis size and 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 the, the thing of finding out with her husband that it wasn't going to grow no more. And then... The whole thing that she said that if there was a, a husband that she would want to swap with, she would swap with Karen because Karen looked like he carry heavy and carry long. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess that's cute enough that that kind of, you know, it, it it plays to his ego. You know, it plays to his ego. And I mean, I'm just going to take you for your word. Hell, you was in Vegas pissing on yourself. So... I'm going to take for your word that Karen is knocking the girls down. That's just, listen, listen. If you got her pissing on herself, I'm going to just have, stand across the room and just like wave at Karen. Hey, Karen. But I ain't getting too close. You know, <laughs> you, you, you got the girls pissing on herself. Go on, Karen. Bravo. But I don't know if you needed to share that just so, so about like, y'all should just stop talking about Toya and uh, Eugene. Because, listen, Grimace and the Fry Guy, I, I don't know. I don't know where y'all y'all friendship stand. Them type of thing, you might want to get just, just stop talking about them, child. So before there be a problem. Before there be a problem. We don't want Eugene punching Karen, and we don't want Karen swinging no blades at Eugene. Especially not about his wife. You, listen. Listen. Whew. Anyway. Moving on. But this is... Anila. Oh, just listen to me. Just listen. Listen. And you might get offended. But girl, I'm just telling you what you put out. You offended, girl, eat it. Whatever. Moving on. Moving on. Now, Toya. Toya. Come in close, my love. You know since season one. You can... Girl, you know how I mean you get down, girl. You know how we get down, girl. You know how I be mean? stroking you to the east and stroking you to the west because you be doing some stuff. 
But I owe you an apology. I owe you an apology, y'all. Everybody down on Treasure Lane, honey, all the Spiller Boy TV folk, honey, get your ink pens out and write this down. I am getting ready to make a public apology to Toya. Hey, y'all know how I get down. Listen, if I'm big enough to sit my big ass up here, honey, and dish it out, I can definitely take it and I can definitely retract it and I can take accountability for it. I, from season one, I've always been riding Toya's back about her boys and her having her boys in the kitchen. Anybody who's been with me any amount of time, you know I've been here the whole time this has been online. The whole time this show's been in existence, I've been reviewing. And I have always wrote her back about her boys and how they're always in the kitchen. And it just gives me anxiety. The kids in the kitchen just, you know, they were little. They were little and they would be all on the counter. And I'm like, girl, she watching them kids. And I would be fussing in these reviews. Well, on tonight, I actually watched, and I watched as the boys were literally helping her cook. And it was literally the youngest, which is the one that's really, he really used to cut up. But the youngest one was in there, and he was actually helping Toya cook. And they flashed over, and they showed him, and baby boy was handling the knife. He was cutting up green peppers, and I was so impressed. I was so impressed by, by watching him handling the knife and this, that thing, and the other, which again, now I have to say, we do these reviews, we watch these television shows, and true enough, and we hear it all the time, why are you judging us? Because that's my job. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you, you always say, you only see a small portion. You see minutes of my life, and then you make a whole judgment. I understand because people do it to me. They do the exact same thing to me. I do it to you. It, everybody got a job to do. But when I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. Toya, I owe you an apology. I am I'm really beside myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, well, I really don't take it back because I really felt those things. I really felt those things. But there was definitely, uh, this is the time where I judged you a about your boys being in the kitchen and whether or not you were paying enough attention to them. Obviously, you were paying attention with them. Obviously, you were talking safety. Obviously, you were teaching in your kitchen. And I'm big enough to sit up here and say, hey, Toya, when I saw a baby boy rolling with the knife, cutting up those green peppers, paying attention, his hand-eye coordination, and it should be, your daddy's a doctor, but he was he was doing the thing, and he was very safe about what he was doing, and this was like the first time I actually seen Toya's kids in the kitchen where I didn't say, <gasps> so, Toya, I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon, and I have to say, good job, Toya, good job, and then we move on, and if you thought it wasn't getting no better, Avery is her oldest one. While she was in Vegas, there was a situation where Avery had gone over to, I guess both the boys went over to a, a sleepover or something or a party or something at someone else's house and some mess jumped off, okay? Some mess jumped off. Avery got accused of stealing. From what they were saying, it sounds to me like this was a white child, okay? So there was a white child and... It, it just, it ended up being a whole thing where he literally, Avery handled himself very well. You know, he didn't pop off or anything like that. He just stood up for himself. It's like, no, that that's not true. I didn't do that. Obviously, it got straightened out. Um, and then there was this whole thing where, you know, they went and got Eugene, brought Eugene into the kitchen. They had this whole conversation, you know what I mean? And it was... It was, it was a, a thing. Like, it was a real-life lesson for their boys, and they actually shared it on camera. So, kudos to Eugene and Toya. All jokes aside, you see I'm not calling them the fry guy and grimace and that. They had some real-life reality TV that went on here that was something that actually needed to be seen, and I thank you two for it. Um, it was cool. 
And then it just, it, it was a lot. That was a lot. That's heavy. And I know anybody who actually has black boys knows what I'm talking about. You know, mothers and fathers, y'all know what I'm talking about, about somebody accusing your black boys of taking something and, and any of that. Even if you got black girls, but you know, black boys is what we talk about. That ain't cool. That don't work. Eugene threw in the piece about, because they're young. To actually be having to have the peace about hanging with the right sets of friends and, and staying away from the toxic friends and really watching yourself. And he really had handled himself well. So that was really, really cool. Really cool. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And then, right as I was like, am I sitting here loving on Eugene and Toya right now? Yes, I was, because they did good. But then, right after that, Toya starts fussing at Eugene about the time, about his time again. And uh, basically the time of him, you know, the time he spends with the boys, you know, and that kind of thing. And then I got irritated because I was like, oh God, like, why Toya? Now, I, sometimes, now we oversharing because that conversation, not in front of the boys, not in front of the boys. And I got uncomfortable because Eugene got uncomfortable. You could see it all over Eugene's face that he was like, so uncomfortable. And then when Avery said to Toya, why are you always yelling at him? I was like, mm, I don't know. Ugh. Bad timing. Bad timing. Those types of, and this is just my thing. This is my own personal. Everybody parent different. This is my own personal. The, that conversation is not a conversation for in front of those boys. And the fact that Avery is checking you about the way in which you're talking to his father. You're putting your son in a in a peculiar uh, little spot. So Toya, mm -mm, no on that, but yes on everything else today. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going to leave that there, and I'm gonna move on before I, you know I'll be finding some reason to be picking at Toya. So <laughs> I'm gonna move on. And your little ponytail up on top of your head with the curly hair, you still you still ranking in there as cool hot mom. So just I just want to throw that in there. You still ranking up there as cool hot mom, girl. That was cute. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Dr. Jackie, uh, she met with Heavenly. And uh Dr. Jackie was watching. She was watching, and she she actually is Heavenly's um OBGYN. So she was watching her. She already had, you know, been kind of keeping an eye on her about the whole menopause thing and all of that. And she saw it all in play while they were in Vegas. And she got some things together for Heavenly. And listen, hats off to Heavenly. Um, I know that subject is a very, very touchy subject for our females. Kudos to Heavenly for being bold enough and brave enough and open enough to actually share that because you know it's it can be a little embarrassing i mean it's natural it's natural but women don't really want to talk about you know approaching menopause and especially not on a large platform like that so you know kudos to dr heavenly for being brave enough and bold enough to actually share she definitely is strong enough to stand in that but um you know, kudos to her for even wanting to share because you know, she don't share. You know, you know how she's about her marriage. She ain't sharing nothing about her marriage. She ain't going there. Okay, so look, the whole menopause thing. I, I, I was impressed. I was impressed by that. Um, and then my little heart broke when she shared the stuff about her mom not doing so well and that her mom was going to hospice. Um, yeah. And then I ended up seeing uh, Dr. Heavenly. You know, I, I follow her YouTube channel too. So I know all this stuff that they're fussing about the, this YouTube channel. I seen the shit she did, okay? I know the shit she said. So I said, again, y'all know usually I don't fall out of this fray where I sit um, into the real, real time. But I seen and heard the shit that Dr. Heavenly was saying, okay? I watched her YouTube channel and in watching the YouTube channel, I know that the mom actually did pass away last December. So, um, you know, that was real heavy. Real heavy coming through. Um, 
with Dr. Heavenly. So, whoo, boy. Um, yeah, condolences to Dr. Heavenly about that. And she actually even showed her picture of her mom. I said, oh, she looks like her mom. She really did favor her mom. I said, wow. Okay, anyway, moving on. I'm getting out of that. Um, Karen and Anila, let's go on back over to their little, their little place, honey, before we get nasty. Okay, so the grandparents show up. Um, I'm sitting there looking at this whole thing. It just kind of, you know what, is it me? Or does it seem like Anila and her dad and her mom already had this whole vision that they was moving into their house? That they was gonna move into their house at some point. Remember when they were building and all that stuff and her mom, she just had so much input, so much to say. It just seems as though that woman always had in her mind to move into Karen and Anila's house. But Karen was the only one out of the loop. That's what it kind of seemed like to me. Like I, I I think he likes those people, but I don't think he don't want to live with them people. And I don't think that's no joke, and I don't think that's just for television. That man don't want to live with them people. I just don't think they vibe like, oh, and listen, when he got to telling her earlier, when they were talking about, you know, the little nastiness and all that, and he told her that her and her, her family eat with their elbows. <laughs> Sad. So their, you know, their little, their little backgrounds is a little different. And baby, I said, listen, that's one of them things. I'm a whole black man over here. So I ain't getting ready to get into that, what y'all got going on over there. That is nothing that I would ever say to anyone of like Indian descent. Y'all eat with y'all elbows. Child, that's like saying, you know, something about slaves or something. I, that's how it, it hit me. I said, oh, uh-uh. As soon as he sounds like, whoa, Karen, whoa. But again, that's like, they can say that to each other. But over here, I would never say that to one of them. Just like they bet not never say nothing to me about no chitlins. Because then it'll be like, what you say? You know, that's how it felt. So when he said that, that they eat with their elbows, I, did, I said, oh! <laughs> I care. Listen, me and Karen would be all right, okay? I would take care, because Karen's mouth is reckless. Karen will... You need to cut somebody out. Take Karen with you. Take Karen with you. And I'll he's good with a scalpel. Take Karen with you. Okay? You do the punching and let him do the cutting. And y'all both do the cussing. Karen crazy. <laughs> he, he out of order. He crazy. Child, listen. I said, oh my goodness. So the people they come, I'm like, this whole thing is a whole mess. And for me, I'm looking at the film. The kids didn't look all that happy to see them people. <laughs> Sorry. I Listen, I'm watching. I'm just watching. Them kids was like, <laughs> here they come. <laughs> but it ain't nothing like Miss Go. What's her name? Miss Gomez. Baby, them kids love that lady. They was broke up about that lady when they real grandma. It's like, oh, oh here she come, honey. I'm saying, okay, whatever, whatever. Listen, I'm just going to say this. Anila, girl, don't lose your husband with this foolishness. You hear me? Because the mama, she's just a fussing. She ain't hearing nothing that Karen's saying. She already fussing and carrying on. She balled up. The damn rules to throw. I said, girl, which I figured she was going to do because she's a hot mess. Balled him up. To, I said, girl, Anila, you didn't already told your, told people. Listen, let me this. hold on a minute. Girl, listen. You got to listen and listen close. You already told the girls that Karen is knocking the girls down. You know, people like that. They He not, girl, he knocking the girls down, honey. He... He a doctor. He got a he got an old nice piece of coin, honey. Girl, don't lose your husband with this bull crap, okay? He cleaned up after himself, got some good D, got some coin. Girl, don't lose your husband playing reality TV here. You, I'm moving on. Yeah, listen. 
Listen. Too much. Too much. I don't care. Girl, you better pay attention. Pay attention, uh, Anila. Damn fool. Anyway, moving on. Let's go over to uh, Simone and, and Cecil's place. Now, they have an old couple's night. Old couple's night. And it's, there, it's Cecil and Simone, Heavenly and uh, Contessa. Heavenly and Damon, Contessa, and Scott. Okay? Here's where it gets sticky. Okay? This is where it gets sticky. Contessa, Contessa, I got to, I got to be honest. I got to give it to where it goes to. Girl, out of order. Out of order. Out of order. Now they go, their whole dinner is really based upon this book. And they're, you know, they're, they're, they're leaning on their friends, which is really a good idea for, you know, some stuff for the book and how they're going to do it and all of this and, and all of that. Now, Simone did went a little too too fast. She thought everything was pretty cool between the two of them since Vegas, but no, they just put some they just put some glaze on the donuts. The donuts are still hot, so the glaze kind of like melted off, and you know what kind of a mess that is. The glaze is all on the parchment paper, and the donut getting hard on top. Okay, so listen, Doctor Damon. Dr. Damon basically was, you know, he was sharing. And what he did, he said, you know, it really, um, it bothers me to my heart that you two have this sh bullshit going on. That's what he said. He didn't sound abrasive. He didn't say it nasty. He, everything that man said, and listen, we all know Dr. Damon. First of all, Dr. Damon don't talk. He doesn't even, he don't fool in the mess. And when he does give to the mess, it is always from a place of, of, of fix it. It's never to add to, even when it's with the men. He's quiet when it's with the men. Remember when he jumped in and said something between the Karen and 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 uh Eugene thing, everybody know what Dr. Damon gives, so that's why they just listening, like, yeah, all right. You know what I mean? There's nothing offensive about what comes out of his mouth because he just ain't that dude. You know what I mean? He's not. I felt that when he said that, that that came from a place of love and respect. When he said that, even the word the words he used is the way that they talk. But I never felt like he was talking down to Contessa. I never felt like he was trying to check Contessa. He checked heavily. He literally sat there in front of y'all, which is something he never does, and checked heavily. Because they had got the, he, when he was talking, Contessa jumped on the thing of like, she was throwing jabs. Oh, you talk about heavenly. I was like, what? It was so out of place. Even if you felt like that, you felt like that. I mean, and the, the T was, he was checking heavenly. He was checking heavenly. We know who was guilty and what, what that was. And he said it out loud. Didn't nobody need no, no uh, oohs and ahs from the damn amen section of the choir? Oh, you talking about heavenly. So you basically were throwing salt in the wound, which made heavenly start coming at you. And then y'all start. And then Damon was like, heavenly, stop. Heavenly ain't stopping. We all know and see, you tell us yourself, heavenly, that that ain't how things go in your house. When Damon say for you to shut up, you shut up at home. I don't know if you felt the pressure of being out and you felt like, like, oh, wait a minute. Now you ain't gonna embarrass me, which is probably what you did which didn't do that, but piss your husband off because you know you don't do that at home. And he told you that's like disrespect. You know what I mean? And because you don't do that at home. You don't do that. So don't get cute out in the street. If you don't do it at home, don't come out in the street and act up because you got to go back home with him. And Contessa was just, she just kept, kept, kept. Listen, Contessa, you out of order. You out of order. 
You were out of order. And then Scott, Scott's not a punk. By any stretch of the imagination, is Scott a punk. Scott didn't say a word. You know why Scott didn't say a word, Contessa? Because he agreed. He knew you were out of order. And you went and put 20 on 10. You started going all up. What was that? And this is where I say, I saw a lesson in anger management, self-anger management, because Damon was not going to go back and forth with Contessa at all, at all. Not no kind of way. He got up and left because he was pissed. He was pissed at that point. What nothing else nice going come out. He was pissed. He was pissed with Heavenly and Contessa was going somewhere where he ain't wasn't even trying to go there with her. You know, she was putting 20 on 10. He got up. He's like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and go. You know how much self-control that took? To get up in a free form. I mean, because they wasn't in church. Most people would have just sat there and just cussed Contessa the hell on out. And Scott too. But he got up and he left. He left. And then Contessa continued on. And I was like, heavily shut up. Like you telling her to shut up, you shut up. Because she's sitting there trying to, you hear what she's saying, daddy? You hear what he said? He said, heavenly, stop. I said, stop. And you just don't want to stop. Stop. Like, I'm not even concerned. I'm past what she's saying. I'm on to you because now you that acted a fool out here in the street. So we got a whole, I ain't even worried about that broad. I said, Lord, have my, that was a whole mess. And I felt bad. It was, it was, that was hard to watch. I said, whoa, the first time when it comes to these women where he actually really tried to lend his hand to give something. And this is, it went right to why he don't talk. And that's what he was actually explaining. He was explaining why he doesn't share. And Contessa just literally proved him right. I said, hashtag, prove me right. I said, wow, Contessa, seriously? Seriously? And then you ain't take, you didn't read the room. You didn't look across there and look at your husband's face. Your husband didn't say anything because no one had done anything to you. No one had done anything to you. You were the aggressive one. You was giving off more masculine energy at that table than anybody there. It was just ugly. It was ugly. I said, wow. 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 And you had on all that dramatic makeup. You look pretty. Um, I wasn't too too keen on the plastic hairdo, but you but in, but baby they had that makeup on you. I was like, why are you made up so much? Like she was baby they had this makeup. Poo, 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 poo. She was made up. I was like, whoo, you give a drag show tonight. But you look nice. I mean, it looked nice, but it was it was giving drag show. It was way too much. It was way too much. It gave drag queen. It gave drag queen looking real nice, but acting an ass acting a complete ass and then you was even acting like a drag queen because you were giving off way too much masculine energy and no feminine energy at all and it was like why why are you doing this read the room look at your husband just just peek over at your husband your husband ain't felt like that man uh did nothing to you i was like woo contessa i i can't get behind you with this one you know i love you but i can't do that you was out of order completely out of order um heavenly you ain't, girl, you done messed up with your husband. Cecil did come out and, uh, you know, talk to Dr. Damon. And he actually tried to, you know, he said, you know, take it easy on her a little bit. You know, there's a lot going on, this, that thing, and the other. And he, Damon was like, yeah, I hear you. But no, you knew as soon as the cameras went off. I know he checked the shit out of Heavenly. He was literally embarrassed. He was embarrassed. And he was pissed. But again, so much self-control. He just removed himself from that situation. I said, wow, come on, Dr. Damon. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that whole thing. Simone, too soon. Way too soon. Um, 
anyway, now let's go on over to another party. We had the, the Dr. Jackie invite everybody to the O shot party, honey. So she's doing this whole thing of take a little, put a little IV in, pull a little blood out, spin it, pull the plasma out, shoot the plasma in your coochie, honey, and it make you say, oh, 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 my God. Okay, <laughs> so it's supposed to rejuvenate the vag and, and really, uh, you know, get you sensitive and get your juices flowing. No pun intended. So Anila brings her mother. Now, I can't say I feel bad for you, Anila. You know your mother. You already told us. You sat and told us. It, again, you sat and told us in your confessional. That your mother didn't even teach you about your period. She didn't even teach you about your period. Again, here you were. See, you in Vegas pissing on yourself. And we found out early on in your life, you at a cheerleading camp with white shorts on and end up turning the pyramid out, honey. Because ain't nobody told you nothing about what's getting ready to go on or could possibly go on. And say, hey, you know, white shorts. So you just been being an embarrassment your whole life to yourself. And your mother just ain't been no help. I said, Lord have mercy. So why you decide to bring her to the O shot party is beyond me. And then she gets there and she's doing like she do. She pulling rank and telling you, you can't get no shot in your veg. I don't know that the O shot is the shot you need. You, you might need to get a whole rejuvenation because you didn't sat talk. See, here I go again. You done told us that Karen that knocked you down to where you pissed it on yourself. So you might not need nothing to juice in you up, honey. You already a little too juicy as it is with the wrong types of juices. You need to be sitting down having a consultation trying to figure out what Dr. Jackie can do to pull you together, so to speak. But what you needed to do was leave Killjoy Annie at home. There was no reason that you should even consider bringing your mother. Leave Killjoy Annie at home. I was like, lady, beat it, lady. But anyway, the women did their stuff. Um, Simone, crazy. You know, Simone's going to make it fun anyway. Simone went back there first. That fool was back there hollering. It was hilarious. Hollering, laughing, because you know how she do. Then when she got there, she's going to say, come on, what? <laughs> Simone's crazy. That's the Simone I like. I like funny, stupid, half-drunk Simone. That's my Simone right there, honey. She was clowning. And then it was really, it was a girl moment, a girl little thing, and they had a good time. And then I noticed they also had the two, the same ladies that catered uh, Simone's event, catered Jackie's. Cute two little ladies. And the one younger lady, she said, you think I can get my shot, honey, right when we get done serving? I said, I know that's right, girl. Wop, 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 Patty. I said, I know it's right. So it was good to see that whatever their business is, because I didn't go look it up, but I'm sure it was actually listed somewhere, but that they really, you know, gave that, that advertisement you can't even buy, baby. So that was cool. That was really cool. Um, and then, uh, oh, that dang on quad. Quad, when Quad said, I'm not going to get a shot, she said, because if I, if I reduce my, my piece, then I'm doing all the work for whoever this man is that I'm going to run into. I got to know that he already coming in knowing what to do. He got to come in and be able to handle me. I don't need to overjuice. I need to wait and see if our stuff that we got really works together. And then if I decide to overjuice, but I ain't going to do all the work for that sucker. And I said, listen, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but anyway, so Toya, messy, she going to say, girl, I heard that over at Simone's house, so, 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 so. And of course, Contessa's like, yes, that's what happened. Because see, Contessa felt as though she checked Damon and Heavenly. Cause she was talking this old mess about, 
I'm a doctor just like he is. He ain't standing up checking me. This, that, thing, and the other. What am I even talking about? It ain't nothing to do about your money. It ain't have nothing to do about your uh, being a doctor or none of that stuff. But she was thinking that she turned it. Like I said, out of order. You done ran on out here. You thinking you done turned it out. You didn't turn it out. You look crazy. You look crazy in that moment. And as she was getting ready to get started, Quad, who is Heavenly's friend, jumped in and was like, well, see, first of all, first of all, and she shut it down. Her mother is dying right now while y'all talking all this. So get into what was really going on. You don't really know what was really going on the day that you called yourself checking her. And you got to get into what's really going on. But right now, she's not here. Because her mother is dying. Did you know that? Her mom is dying as you all are speaking. And they were like, oh. Felt real stupid over there gossiping, right? I said, okay, Quad. Um, yeah, all right. And then, boom. The real Contessa showed up. And then Contessa led a prayer for Heavenly's mother. I know the real contestant's in there somewhere. The real contestant, I don't know what's going on. I mean, again, I seen, you know, Dr. Heavenly. I seen her live and stuff, and, and I ain't even going there. But I, that was the real contestant as far as I'm concerned. That's the real contestant that showed up like, oh, shit, let me stop with the camera balls. Because that's all it was about. It really felt like camera balls and flexing and TV shows. The real contestant showed up and led the prayer. She led, okay, let's do a prayer, and led the prayer. That's the real contestant. Nobody's going to make me believe that the real contestant don't love Heavenly. And the real Heavenly loves contestant. They just got to get it together. And at some point, they'll get it together. How many times we did this with Quad and, and Heavenly? And at some point, the real quad shows up and the real heavenly shows up and they get it together and then they in love again. Jackie and Simone, same thing. But that was the real contestant showed up. I was glad the real contestant showed up toward the end of the, the episode because I didn't want to walk away from the episode like, contestant, what the hell? You know, the real contestant did show up. But them camera balls, watch them. Watch them, Contessa, because that wasn't cute. That wasn't even no good look. Anyway, so that's that. <clears throat> enough said. I, I'm, yeah, I didn't talk enough. I'm gone. I'll catch y'all next week. Later.